Yeah, no, I definitely agree. So one of the other uh, questions that continued to come up when I asked uh, the listeners a que- what questions they'd ask a vet is just the idea of finding a vet. And, and I'll, I think I'll, especially, I guess these people obviously are not part of the cricket keeper or the um, critter keeper carpet people. These are people who are in the industry and have many animals and, and really care for their animals. Yeah, And I think they sort of have a lot of times the same sort of vibes you would get when you go into a pet store. Like, you know, when you go into a pet store, you have the guy that's trying to tell you about the Crested Gecko and you're like, you don't really know what you're talking about type thing. I think that's how they interpret vets a lot of the time. Yeah. Does that sound like, is what, what, is there any way around that? I think it's hard and I, uh, I get it a lot. Um, especially, you know, sometimes I'll look at forums and things and vets are just lambasted on there and and uh, treated like very suspiciously and uh, i get it from a point because there was a time when we did not know anything you know reptiles weren't seen as anything anybody would want to spend money on what was the point so you just had a few people that were like yeah i'll see your iguana but they didn't know and so i, I think a lot of people have kind of had this like uh, inherited memory you know passed down through reptile keepers of that kind of thing um, and unfortunately, a lot of veterinarians don't understand reptiles and will say, yeah, I'll see it. And they have the best of intentions, but they don't know what they don't know. And so that's not really great for us as a profession. Um, that is changing. And now you can find um, board certified exotic vets. Um, you can also go to um ARAV.org, which is the Association of Reptile and Amphibian Veterinarians. And they have a location function where you can find not necessarily a board certified vet, but somebody who is in that organization um, near you. And I think people who invest the time and the money to join that organization are going to be more knowledgeable about reptiles than somebody who is not. Um, the board certification in reptile medicine itself is somewhat new, so not a lot of people have it. Um, I am not certified. Um, I'm working towards it, but I do not. I'm not a board certified specialist. So, is that the that American Board of Veterinary Practitioners? Is that is that yeah, the same board? Yeah, that is the same board, and I believe I believe that is the same board for for most of for North America in general. Um, there might be something else in Europe, but I believe Canada, United States, and Mexico even are all can all be um, ABVP certified veterinarians. Yeah, that was one of the questions that when somebody had asked, it's you know, how come you can take your uh, reptile to see any vet, but there's only twelve or fourteen a- ABVP certified vets in the country or something like that? Yeah. But I guess is that certification quite a long process? Like if you're working towards it, what do you have to do to get there? So there's two routes. You can either go right out of school uh, and you can do um, an internship. Usually they want you to do like a small animal internship. So that'd be like dog and cat. And then you would do like an exotics internship. And then you would do a residency specifically for reptiles. Um, And then you have to take a test. And it's really hard to even get a place in an internship because there are so few places that will take you and there's huge competition. So there's no guarantee you will even end up in the internship. Um, So a lot of people try and they just cannot find a place that will accept them. And so the other option is once you've been out of school for five years, you can um, go through the ABVP And you will, um, you have to see a specific caseload percentage of the species that you want to be boarded in. You have to have papers submitted um, and published, um, and which takes a lot of work. And then you have to take a test. Um, And all of that takes time and money. Uh, You know, it costs several hundred dollars to do the test and many hours of studying. So it's not an easy process. Um, And then at the end, if you do get certified, I think what people have to understand is you as a pet owner, you know, you're going to be paying more to go see a board certified veterinarian than you would someone who is not, which I think is fair. They did so much more work and everything and their knowledge base is incredible, but, you know, they are going to charge more because you're really paying for their expertise. 
Right. Yeah. So the fact that there's only 12 or 14 is not really indicative of the people who are, you know, vets who are experts in reptiles. They're just people that have actually worked towards that and, and put in the time and spent the money. And, and it's Correct. great that they have that, but that doesn't certainly doesn't mean that they're the only 12 uh, on the continent that know about reptiles. Right. Far from it. There are lots of people that know just as much or more than the people that have been board certified, but for whatever reason, you know, are working towards it or they don't have the money for the test or, you know, something else. So yes, it'd be fantastic if you could go see um, a board certified reptile vet. But I think, you know, the next step down would be an ARAV member, um, you know, because they also put the time in and and do continuing education and everything as well and are going to be more knowledgeable than somebody who is not in the organization. Right. In terms of continuing education, what are some things, is that something that you have to drive yourself or are there things that just kind of come to you uh, for opportunity, like learning opportunities to advance your skill set? It's a mixture of both. Uh, Depending on where you are uh, in the United States, um, the amount of hours you need per year varies a little bit. Um, But usually it's something like 20 or 30 hours of continuing education every year. And that can be going to Um, There's lots of conferences and you'll attend lectures uh, and each lecture is usually an hour. And so that's one hour of continuing education. Um, You can get a few hours by reading journal articles and submit like a summary. Uh, But most veterinarians go to conferences and there are, there's a great big conference every year called Exotic Con and it's um, the reptile or uh, vet small mammals. So like, uh, you know, ferrets and rabbits and things, and then avian vets, and they have one giant conference every year. Interesting. Yeah. So you can kind of co- collaborate and, and learn some new things. Of, of course, research never stops. So I'm sure there's always new things to learn. Yeah, there's always something new or something has changed. Uh, even year to year, it's something you learned the, the last year, they'll be like, hey, we have an update. This is different now. Mm. Are there any resources that you would recommend? Is there, there are some people who, who feel like they aren't close to a vet anywhere. There, there's nowhere where they can find a good uh, exotic vet. Is there places online or, or books or resources that you can point people towards that would help them uh, just to generally care for their animals? Uh, again, I'd say ARAV.org. Um, they have lots of handouts. They have information um, and it's all been you know approved by veterinarians. So you know that it's correct. So that's one big source. Um, uh, Melissa Kaplan had a website. Uh, It's a little bit outdated, but it's still pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then there's um, Reptifiles is a pretty good information source. Those are usually where I recommend people go because everything has been researched and you can see where they're getting their information from. It's not just somebody saying, I've done this for 20 years and it worked. Yeah, yeah, I definitely know Mariah at Reptophiles is spends a ton of time reading and 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 going through the scientific literature to make sure that the, whatever's on her website is up to date. 